Today, I have access to 24 hours in my day. And very soon, I will have access to 72. And so will all of you. See, growing up, a typical day would consist of my mother picking me up from ballet practice. She would help me unwrap my point shoes and squeeze me into my basketball ones. And oftentimes, she would tilt her head like this and say, my dear, must you do all sports? And of course, I would say, yes, mom, I'm very tall. They need me. <laughs> and she would say to me, my darling, do your best. Don't be average. Choose. For as long as I could remember, I felt like Alice in Wonderland. I always wished I had more time in my day. But I constantly felt like if I enjoyed my day, then I had to compromise. If I did more of what I wanted to do, then I couldn't do it well. And if I did less of what I wanted to do, then I couldn't do what I truly enjoyed. Making choices is ultimately about opportunity cost. How can you make more than one action happen without losing out on something else? Finally, my frustration has come to an end. In the future, time will be optimized. We will be able to live across three different dimensions. I'll show you how this can be done. See, everybody in the world has access to the same 24 hours. And no, please don't go tell your friends that I taught you how to make your days longer or shorter. That's not the point of this. But in the future, we will live not just in this one physical dimension, but across two further psychological dimensions. And we will fluidly move between them, depending on what we want. Dimension number one is the physical world. Go ahead and high-five the person next to you. I'll wait for the translation. <laughs> this is where all of our five senses will be activated. You can see it, smell it, taste it, hear it, or touch it. This is where we can truly be present with one another. We can embrace, we can love one another. Dimension number two is the digital world. This is the world of our ideas, opinions, learnings, and opportunities. And I'm not talking about your typical Google search or your Facebook account or your Instagram. I'm talking about a reality where AI will collect, store, and analyze all of our behaviors and then interpret them and create predictions for us to make us faster and make us better at making decisions in the future. Dimension number three is my favorite, the augmented world. This is where we will layer our digital reality onto our physical reality to create what is called augmented reality. This is where we will be able to experience our life in a variety of different experiences. And that is where our imagination will come into play. What's important for us to know is the limitations and capabilities of each of these three dimensions. Only then will we be able to balance, optimize, and appreciate our time in each. So, in the physical world, with the ability to feel, we will be focused on well-being and happiness. In the digital dimension, with limitless access to information, we will be focused on productivity. And in this juxtaposition of the physical and digital, we will be focused on creativity in the augmented dimension. So today, how do we contribute to each of these three dimensions? In the physical world, we are present, we volunteer, we help one another. We feed the digital world with power to AI to learn more about us. Our name, our age, our favorite books, our vulnerabilities, and our endless questions to Google, yes, they do record everything that you write there. And what about in the augmented dimension? But before we get there, let's imagine now that everybody has a Tinder account, or pray that none of us do either. Our swipes give indicators to our preferences in terms of who we find attractive. Our thumb-stopping moments gives power to advertisers to tell them what we like. And our faces give power to AI to help them spot us almost anywhere. We have literally created an alter ego, but online. One could even argue that imperfections now will only exist in the real world. We cannot Photoshop, we cannot filter details of our lives so perfectly in the physical world as we can in the digital. One could argue that we could lead a dual life, 
married in the physical world, dating Jon Snow from Game of Thrones in the digital world. <laughs> a girl can only dream, and he might be watching this. So what about in the augmented dimension? We are able to visualize a completely alternate reality. We could project an image of a loved one in a hologram format sitting next to us in a living room, or even an image of someone from the past. Imagine Maha. She is 14 years old, and she is trying to learn programming. Yet, she is frustrated because she thinks it's the most impossible thing. It is. <laughs> programming is pretty difficult. <laughs> so in the physical world, she compares herself to all of her peers, who, who are much better than her in maths and physics. She comes to class. She sits down next to everybody else, and she takes notes, endless notes, and yet, she goes back home frustrated. She still cannot program. She surfs the internet and she programs online for hours and hours, day after day. Let's take a step back. Let's enter Maha into the digital dimension, where the AI has already interpreted the type of learner she is. It has already identified the gaps in her knowledge and will then build a hyper-personalized schedule with the relevant resources to build her her track for success. Let's take one more step. Now imagine the AI suggests that we enter Maha into the augmented dimension, where she can learn, engage, and network with inspiring figures from all over the world in this new fabricated society. See how giving access, offering Maha access to a whole other reality that she wouldn't have had access to in the physical world, we were able to inspire her to learn how to program. See how we were able to take the amount of hours in a day for Maha from 24 to 72. Now imagine the types of breakthroughs that we will be experiencing in not just the educational industry, but in, education, in the telemedicine industry, which is as important, if not more important. Let's take the example of Dr. Hashem, a 35-year-old surgeon from Lebanon. He has his hospital, his research and development center, and his experience that guides his everyday practice. Yet, he is frustrated like many doctors around the world because he does not have enough time to keep up to date with all of the research that is out there. And only his city and his network is what he has access to. Dr. Hashim hears about augmented reality and how he can practice on non-living bodies in a completely alternate reality. He is able to take risks in a world where he doesn't have to hurt a, a body that's coming into his surgery room. He is able to share with other doctors around the world their research, their tests and results. And he's able to bring that back to the physical world. See how integrating in our three dimensions, we were able to help Dr. Hashim as well. Now, I'm not saying that Maha and Dr. Hashim don't still have to report back into the physical world with this new information. Maha still has to program in the real world, and Dr. Hashim still has to operate on the surgery bed of the hospital. But we were able to do much more for both of them. Now, for all the skeptics in the room who are thinking that this sounds pretty black mirror, it does. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is, if we can actually prepare for this reality, where these three dimensions can coexist, then we need to ensure that we have the right type of infrastructure in whichever type of context to be able to prepare us for this new type of society. In the physical world, we will focus on being healthy, happy, and feeling safe. In the digital dimension, we will spend every waking moment optimizing our brain and generating new ideas. And in the augmented world, we will take all of those ideas in our mind, in our imagination, and we'll project them into the real world to be able to experiment with limitless boundaries. We will decide how we want to shape our future based on our needs. We will be able to do all of this, but my ask from all of you is to use each one of the dimensions responsibly. Give back to the real world. Be present while you're here. We need to be fluid when deciding where we will get our creativity, our productivity, but above all, our well-being from. 
these tools that each of the dimensions can give us can empower us to occupy any reality that we wish to enter. But we must decide for ourselves which one we want to go to, based on what we need. It'll be very interesting to see how in the future we will distribute our time across these three dimensions. I'm excited about the future. How are you planning to use your 72 hours in a day? Grazie.